I gotta pick all this up. What I was thinking was that there was no way that the water was gonna make it all the way to the bottom. However, some people wanna see if this actually works. Let's just get to it. We're gonna experiment with completely dry pouring this tube form. In our last video, we filled it to different heights and then we put water in between the layers. Some folks said that's not exactly dry pour. I get it. You guys wanna see it a little bit differently and we're here to experiment. We're gonna fill this four foot tube form all the way to the top. What we're gonna learn is how far that water can actually penetrate. I'm gonna bury this maybe three or four inches into the ground so it's stable. Other than that though, I'm just gonna put water from the top. I'm not gonna soak the outside because some of the moisture may penetrate in through the outside. Another thing is, can you put one of these in there? This is a pretty drastic example. Four feet of concrete is way more than what you're ever gonna use for a concrete slab. So we're using 60 pound bags of 4,000 PSI Sacrete high strength concrete mix. All right, here goes the first bag. Ooh. You have no idea how much this pains me. Hopefully this is not against the rules of dry pour. So because we poured this guy completely dry, uh, and usually when you set concrete in, you have to shake it a little bit, tap it a little bit, uh, just to make sure that the bubbles come out, everything settles in correctly. Please, YouTube keyboard heroes, let me know if this is acceptable. Well, that's settled down quite a bit. Let's go ahead and put our ankle bolt in. Now I'm gonna set this to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another bolt on the other side. Now I'm just giving it an opportunity to resettle itself. So, in the true spirit of dry pour, no mix, concrete pouring, we're gonna go ahead and mist it five seconds, being sure not to disturb that upper layer. So here goes. That top layer is nice and dark now. We're gonna come back in one hour and do another mist. Let's wait one more hour and we'll come back and give it a shower. So it's been another hour. I think that because we have such a small surface area, the experiment is not going quite as well as with a large slab where you can mist it and get more water in that larger surface area. So I'm going to mist it a little bit more heavily now that the top layer is a little bit settled in. Uh, I want you to come and see. I'm going to put my finger here. Yep, it's still kind of soft. Let's mist it a little bit more and see if we get some more penetration. So we're done with this misting. We're gonna come back in another hour and do some more watering. So now we're ready to really soak this tube form. I'm gonna change it from mist to shower. I'm gonna do a light showering. I like that. I don't want any of the water on the outside. I'm afraid that that may uh, bias the experiment. So some of the water could absorb through the cardboard. So because this is such a deep tube form, we're gonna change the watering periods to every 20 minutes. If you follow the conventional dry pour method. They have you water it every hour uh, and sometimes every two hours. Three or four days is not practical for anybody. We're gonna shorten the period, the watering period to 20 minutes, see what we get. I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna soak this up until we get that small water lip right there and let it soak in. Then we'll come back at another 20 minutes and do the same thing. All right, we'll come back in 20 minutes. Now we're gonna crack it open and see how much of that water actually made it to the bottom. I'm pretty hopeful. Let's cut it open and see what it looks like. So here's something I wanna show you. It looks like this top layer didn't fully adhere to the rest of the concrete. And I think the reason is that it was too light of a mist in that top layer. So that's just something to watch out for when you're doing dry pour concrete. Make sure that that first layer of misting is sufficient enough so that the first layer is about an inch deep That is a lot of fracturing. That's not out. So my camera didn't catch it, 
but uh, I just pulled this out by hand. Had this in the hole. I drilled it all the way in. I was able to just knock it out by hand and it destroyed the concrete entirely. So you can see here where it just kind of fell apart on me. Yeah, I'd say that's a big negative for dry pour. These anchor bolts are supposed to be able to be drilled into these piers after they're cast. And the concrete is cured, but it's not very well, it's not holding together very well as you can see. So, yeah, it's, it's crumbling a lot. Doesn't make me very hopeful for the rest of the concrete beneath this. Okay, I think that's enough testing of these anchor bolts. This one did hold up pretty well, but I was pretty surprised by the anchor bolt that we pulled out of there. Holy smokes. That's pretty cool. Oh. So it's not very far down. You can already see a bunch of dry concrete right there. So from the top of the form to there, whew. 19 inches. Are you ever going to be pouring these concrete forms completely dry and then watering them? Only if you're super lazy. Definitely other methods to do this. I think that if you're ever pouring a concrete slab that's 19 inches, hopefully you're smart enough to be able to do the lower layers first and then do the upper layers and save yourself some time with the dry pour technique or some hybrid of it. So I'm going to cut the rest of this open just to see what it looks like. Maybe we got lucky and we had some water penetration on the other side. Maybe there's some moisture that seeped up from the bottom. We don't know. Let's go ahead and find out. You know, I'm kind of surprised. This looks pretty good. Let's crack it open and see what it what it looks like on the inside. And that's how much moisture we got from the ground. But once again, look at that. It's very crumbly. Oh gosh. And it's leaving dents down the entire length. No, I don't know. Gosh, I don't know that I would even use this for a slab. There aren't any voids. So it looks like our tapping method may have been able to sink all those pockets in and we didn't have any channeling of water. So this is the one that I slightly mixed together. Yeah, I got it. This one's not dry. This one is dry, but they're both cured. Remember, curing happens within 24 hours. Drying is about 28 days per inch. Really what I'm doing is I want my anchor bolt back. Let's go and get it. So now that we've made a huge mess, I think that settles it with dry pour concrete. You can only make it about 18 inches deep, and that's very hopeful. I would say, if you are doing a dry pour concrete slab, the most you, you should do is four inches. If you do any more than that, you're probably gonna run the risk of it not soaking all the way through. I'd be curious to see what the actual PSI strength of this is. <sighs> all right, well, I guess I'll get the dustpan. I do want to keep this one. I think there's a snail show in there.